If you're a female founder, just like me, what should you know about running a business in 2023? What's it like raising funds? What does the VC landscape look like? What mistakes should you avoid making? And how do you prepare yourself mentally? In honor of International Women's Day, I rewatched the incredible female founders that I interviewed on the show this season to bring you insights, lessons, and struggles so you don't feel like you're alone in this. I am Maria Vorostovsky. I'm a headhunter, founder of HVO Search, and host of this video podcast, Anatomy of a Leader. Before I jump into it, please subscribe to my channel. Make sure you like, comment, and follow. Regardless of gender, one of the toughest challenges for a founder is fundraising. However, for female-only teams, it's a lot harder. In 2022, less than 2% of VC funding went to female-only teams. Elizabeth Cowper, founder of Womo and Ludo, Technology for Inclusion, added this. If you have a co-founder who's a man, it's 14%, and the other 85% goes to male founders or teams of male founders. Mm -hmm. 85%. Nell Lloyd Malcolm, co-founder of Zydrobe, had this to say about raising funds. We have a struggle at play as female founders because there's not an, an innate sense of trust with women um, as there are with men. They can have a really brilliant idea and have very little else to back it up. There's a level of trust that they are going to pull it off. The gender bias against women is real. Hasna Korda, co-founder of Save My Wardrobe, in the early days had to send my husband, a male figure, to lead some of the conversation. But I was preparing him all of the topics. That made me really angry that women still are not being taken seriously when fundraising. Nell offered this advice to women. Have the information have everything. You can't give them any excuse to not believe in your idea because you know what it is. Whilst I do believe in knowing your stuff, the reality is that women have to know their stuff better than anyone else or they will be overlooked. I asked Anna Whitehouse, also known as Mother Pucker on social media, Anna is a tireless campaigner for Flexible Working for All. She's a podcaster and she's the creator of Flex Appeal. What do you think is the biggest barrier to women getting ahead in the workplace? I think it comes down to it seeming like it's a women's issue to fix. I'm really tired by that. I'm exhausted. And I wish there were more men standing up and speaking up, leaning in and recognising that this is about them too. Elizabeth mirrored that and also taught me a new word. I need man ambassadors, you know, men that are going to really champion women because men tend to listen to men. So if a man says to another man, invest in Elizabeth, invest in Womo, this idea is brilliant. He's more likely to pay attention to that. So I think for women, as frustrating as it is, it's getting those man ambassadors on side, getting those champions who can really shout about what women are doing. Gender bias gets worse as women have children, as exemplified by the inadequate childcare system here in the UK. Rachel Carroll, founder of Cora Kids, went deep into the topic of why women don't take enough leadership roles in society, saying... Well, how can they do that if they are the ones sorting out the paper mache volcano and the like mm. zombie outfit and the odd socks day for children in need and all the thousands of things that you have to do with kids? Childcare needs to be basic infrastructure. And we're so far away from that here in the UK. Imagine if one third of our roads in London were impassable, or if one third of tube trains broke down overnight, or one third of London didn't have water or electricity. That would be on the front page of every newspaper in the world if that happened. And yet with childcare, for some reason, it's, it doesn't matter, who mm -hmm. cares? So why is this happening? Mother Pucker told some home truths. Caring is a female responsibility as far as the workforce is uh, aware. Men find it emasculating asking for flexible working, what they are faced with is the archaic dinosaurs at the top who believe women very firmly should be in the home. But many women don't want to be firmly in the home. What about the woman that wants to have a career and have children? Said Dr. Rona Iskander, the dentist and co-founder of Parlor Toothpaste that you may have seen on Dragon's Den. Rona froze her eggs when she was 32. 
the number and quality of eggs is drastically different at 32 compared to 39. And I thought, you know, why not? I'm in a relationship, but you know, if I need them, they're there. There's so much like stigma and taboo around the subject of like freezing your eggs. But in reality, women are prioritizing their careers. There are many taboo subjects that we don't talk about often enough that concern women. Fertility, childbearing, menopause, something men never have to think about. The women I spoke to are all very resourceful, resilient and tough. Actually, that word tough came up a lot. We talked about making decisions, making mistakes and detours. Every founder has to make hard calls, which may feel like a mistake at the time. For example, when you say no to funds when you have zero in your bank mm -hmm. account and you have spent all your savings, it's really hard to say, no, I, I don't want to enter in a partnership with this investor because the terms are really not founder friendly and uh, they're a bit aggressive. It felt like a mistake for a long time. And now I'm like, oh, no, that wasn't a mistake. Mm -hmm. Founders also need to develop a thick skin because they have to deal with rejection on a daily basis. My conversation with Giorgio Granata, co-founder of WIPE, went deep into this topic. How do you deal with rejection and not being understood? It's really tough. It's really tough. You have to not let it cut into your identity. At one point, you're like, listen, uh, you know, I can only be what I am, but... Worse than rejection, indifference. Yes. Rejection is respect. If you respect me, you're going to take two minutes out of your day to say, I'm not too interested. I don't want to have a conversation. I don't have time for a coffee. Indifference means you don't, you don't like me maybe, but you don't even respect me. Oh, I really felt that one. Being a headhunter, you get ghosted and rejected 99% of the time by both potential clients and candidates. The natural instinct is to be tough on ourselves, especially in our younger years. I didn't believe in myself. I was really tough on myself. And I think that lack of confidence can be um, really tough to live with. So how do you mentally prepare for this? What advice would you give your younger self? Dr. Sam Bunting, the in-demand dermatologist and founder of Dr. Sam Skincare, shared this. Oh, I get quite emotional even just thinking about that. Just to be kinder to myself. Yeah. I was, I've, I've always been so harsh on myself. Many founders beat themselves up over not progressing faster or compare themselves to others. Rianne Stevenson, founder of the beautiful supplements brand Arta, shared this. I find myself sometimes at night looking at brands being like, oh, they're doing this so well. This brand has been in business for 15 years. I've been in business for eight months. Why am I comparing myself to a brand that's had 20 million of capital when we've done a friends and family round? Her advice was be patient. Things take so much longer than you'd like. A friend once told me you can't eat an elephant in one sitting. If you can just be a bit calm in that and patient, it would save a lot of the suffering. Shivani Pao, podcast host of A Millennial Mind, spoke about staying in your lane and focusing on your own desires. So many of us have so many dreams and we don't do them because we let everyone else's opinions drown out those dreams. So what is her advice to her younger self? I wish I started this much earlier and I wish I believed in myself even at the start of this journey, to know how much I could do. Believe in yourself and also be kind and enjoy it. You don't have to beat yourself up and question everything. I think you can be an achiever without having to have this tight grip on things. You may be even better for it because you think more expansively. Anxiety, worrying and self-doubt really narrow down your perspective. We should teach about mindfulness to young people. We should teach them how to manage their emotions. We should teach them to know themselves. It would make such a difference to people's satisfaction and happiness. And above all, be grateful. For everything, even the bad stuff that happened, even when it's gone horribly wrong mm -hmm. and there's been some disasters along the way in my life that you could look back and say, God, that was awful. I learned from it. I grew from it. Because you've got this. It's going to be okay. Just go with it. Be in flow, be on the journey. Looking back now on your own journey, what advice would you give your younger self? Let me know in the comments below. And since you're still here,
please subscribe, like, follow and share. Wishing you a fantastic International Women's Day today and every day.